Today's video is going to be an update. And I'm going to update several things that we've done around here. And so let's uh, show you around. So first off, I have finished the entire gravel driveway. And right now it's about 6.30 in the morning. And the reason why I'm out here so early is because it's nice and cool and there is no wind. So not only did I get all the gravel spread, but I put this nice rock border with solar lights all the way around. I had to dig a lot of those boulders up and I moved them all by putting them in the car from the spots I dug them up or collected them and dumped them off in multiple locations around the driveway and then lifted them all into place and I think it turned out fabulous it actually looks better than I expected and as you can see all the gravel is spread do a slow pan around Originally, I was going to put a border of cut logs all the way around the driveway. I was going to cut three to four foot sections and put them around. I have a ton of wood on the property of dead trees and deadfall and things like that. Um, but I decided to do the boulders. Um, that would have been my first choice, would have been to do the boulders. Um, but... Uh, Originally, when I was planning it out, I thought maybe it was going to be a little too big of a bite of the apple for me to take um, because of how much physical work it is. Um, there's several hundred boulders, and the larger ones are 100 pounds. Some of them are probably closer to 120 to 130 pounds. That's a lot of weight to lift, but uh, I stuck with it, and I've been doing a lot of work around here, and I'm actually getting stronger and getting back into shape and uh, it, I think it worked out really really well um, once again I'll give you another quick pan around at the boulders and I believe that most of these are granite um, they're quite old they've been here on this property, I'm sure, for uh, many, many years. Get a view from back here. And at night, when the solar lights are on, it looks fabulous. Like I said, it turned out better than I had expected it to. Also, we've had many questions in the comments about our cell phone signal out here. Um, our original camp spot we had decent signal and over here since we're a little bit lower we don't have very good signal um, and the direction that the signal comes from is right on the other side of the shipping container so the container blocks most of our good signal and we ended up buying a booster made by Wilson Electronics 
and we bought their largest antenna and I'll show you that. That's my antenna. I have it mounted six feet above the container pointed directly at the tower and inside the RV where the indoor antenna is from the booster it gets excellent excellent signal and with that as long as it's not the weekend when everybody out here is on that one tower we get 4G and usually get four to five bars, which is excellent. Um, we can stream just about anything and upload videos a lot faster. And uh, been very, very pleased with it. So if you're looking for a good booster for your house or for your RV, uh, I can highly recommend Wilson Electronics. Um, it it's also goes under the name of WeBoost, but the parent company is Wilson Electronics. Okay, here's an update on the vegetables that I planted. Um, like I said initially in the video where we planted them, uh, we're kind of more towards the end of the season. Um, the growing season is a lot shorter here at 6,000 feet than it is um, at lower elevations like where I lived in Oregon. Our growing season was about seven months and here it's more like four and i happen to start right in the middle so the plants aren't going to have the, the the longest amount of time to do what they're going to do um, today is august 10th and we've been here uh, on the property now for 10 and a half weeks and i think it's been almost a month since I did the transplant, uh, maybe a little bit less, but somewhere in there. And, uh, here they are. This one is the cucumbers. This one is the Mexican zucchini. This one is the yellow squash and the cucumelon which is a vine and i put these tomato cages in there to one help them be a little more sturdy and to give them uh, something to kind of stay off of the ground i really didn't want them growing on the ground there's a lot of bugs that crawl on the ground here and i wanted to give them the best chance and if you're noticing the burned and destroyed leaves that's not from the heat, that's from the wind. Um, almost every day we've been having gusts upwards of 50, sometimes 60 miles an hour, and it really is destroying the plants. Um, I could build something to shelter them from the wind, but the season is so short. Whatever I build out here is just honestly, they may not get to the point where we get any real vegetables off of them before the season's over. Um, and anything I build out here is just going to get destroyed over the winter. Um, eventually I'm going to build a green, a small greenhouse and I'm going to build what's called a hoop greenhouse, which is a very simple construction method. And at the end of the season, you take the plastic off of it and you leave the hoops, uh, exposed to the elements. Um, it doesn't make any sense to spend my time and my money on that considering that the season is almost over. So anyway, I just decided to give this a little try. Um, I wasn't having a lot of expectations of uh, very much of a yield, but it, it's something to do. And it, you know, there's a chance we might get a few squash before the end of the season. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. Now here's an update on the mice and what has been working and what has not. So I've tried a number of things. I've tried a number of suggestions and I really appreciate all the suggestions that everybody has had in the comments. And I can tell you that essential oils like peppermint oil, um, I've heard a lot of really good things about them. 
Um, there's one spot where I have had a nest made twice on top of my engine in the RV. And I can tell you that I completely soaked the spot where the nest had been made. And I caught the nest probably within one day of it being made. So um, no wires were chewed. So I soaked that area with peppermint oil. And a week later, there was another nest there. So I'm thinking that that's not much of a deterrent. I've also tried bright lights. And honestly, the area that they got up into the RV was right where the bright lights were. So I don't think the lights work. Uh, in my personal experience, in around 70 days or so that we've been here, I have 73 killed mice. What has worked for me are good old fashioned traps. And my plan of attack was to go with a large volume of traps. That way I increased my odds of catching the mice. And almost every morning when I get up, there's two or three in my traps. So what I have, I'll show you. I have 10 traps set around the RV. I've gotten three kills with the old school Victor traps. These newfangled plastic traps. These, I have two sizes. I have the small one for mice and the large ones for rats. Um, I've gotten five kills in the small ones and all of the rest were with one of the larger rat traps, which I'll show you. And one trap in particular, I have them all baited the same way. I have them all baited with peanut butter. But one trap in particular is my big killer. For some reason, all of the mice, male or female, just seem to keep going to that one trap and forfeiting their lives. At one trap in particular, and I've made sure to keep it in the same spot, has at least 35 kills. One trap, actually probably closer to 40. It's unbelievable that one trap keeps doing it. Now what I do is I have, there's one of the larger rat traps. I keep one, I have four of them. I keep one at each jack pad. And I'll show you. I'm not going to get close up to it, but last night, there's another one. That's the one trap right there, my big rat trap. I get one, like I said, almost every single night out of that one trap. I really don't know what is attracting them to that one trap, but it's working. And so I clear the trap and I put it back in the same spot every single day. The other thing I've done, and I happened to get a kill last night in the bucket, so I will not show the little guy in there floating, but I made a bucket with one of these log rollers. They climb up this, they jump on the log to get to the peanut butter and they roll right off into the water. I keep the water level about halfway and they drown. One night I got four mice in that one trap. And it appears that all of the mice I've been catching are all kangaroo mice. Um, so I have poison bait inside my basement. That way if they do happen to get in there, they're going to eat something immediately and, and die. I've only had one mouse in the basement. It was when we were in our first camp spot and I saw that he had been going to a roll of paper towels I had down in the basement and making a nest from it. So what I did is I put a sticky trap right next to the paper towels and I got him. Um, unfortunately, I have had to dispatch somewhere around 
eight, I believe, mice that were still alive in the trap, and I shot them with my pellet rifle. Um, I go for the quick headshot. I know it sounds gruesome, but uh, I want to put them down as humanely and as quickly as possible. Um, and then everybody might be wondering what I do with the carcasses. I bring them out into my field right here. I put them out here in the open and the birds come and they get a snack. Almost every day I see one of the local ravens or turkey vultures come down and get a free meal. Um, we also have falcons here and they will not go after the dead mice. I believe they only want to eat live food. It's the only thing I can gather from it. But anyway, once again, thank you for all your suggestions. I hope that answers any questions about the mice. Uh, I feel like I'm having really good success. Like I said, I've been here a little over 70 days and I have 73 kills. So I'd call that a really good ratio. And I have, I have none getting into my RV and none doing any damage to my RV. Um, the shipping container is sealed up extremely tight and I don't believe there's any way they can get in there. So anyway, so if you're wondering what uh, we've done with the trailer and the razor, the trailer behind me was purchased before we ever bought the razor. I bought it in Oregon before we left home and hit the road permanently. And I bought a trailer that was going to be big enough to carry whatever razor I bought and big enough to use as a mobile garage when we're on the road. And I still use it as a garage. Um, I have moved all of my important things and tools and all that kind of stuff into the shipping container until we hit the road again. But I continue to use it as a garage for my Polaris Razor. I choose to keep the Razor indoors when I'm not using it because the guy I bought this from, and the reason why it looks so new being a 2009, it's spent its entire life inside the garage unless it's being driven. And so I also keep it in the garage for that same reason. Um, the sun here in Arizona absolutely destroys everything. And I can keep this thing from getting anywhere by just leaving it inside. And so that's what I do. We also use it as a place to store all of our trash. I do burn all of our paper trash, but we still accumulate plastic and other things. Um, we also have a, a composting bin for all of our food scraps. But we keep the trash in here because uh, trash smells. And I don't want it inside the shipping container smelling up everything in there. So I leave it in the garage. There's nothing on the razor to absorb smells. So this seems to work really well. Also an update, if any of you have been curious about how we do our laundry, we have a washer dryer combo. All we have to do is fire up the generator. So we've been here on the property for over 10 weeks and I have yet, now I'm stepping into the bathroom to give you a shot of it. We have done all of our laundry over the entire 10 weeks here on the property. We haven't had to leave to do laundry, which has been really nice. And this thing works really good. Um, it does have a smaller capacity, but I'll tell you what, it gets to close really clean. And honestly, you have to turn it on low heat when it runs on dryer. Um, it's a strange invention. You literally go from having water in it and then pushing a button and it turns into a dryer without changing anything. Okay, everybody, check it out. All right, hold your hold your head still for a second. <laughs> hold your head still. Hold your head still. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna torture you. I'm not gonna torture you. Good lord. Can everybody see that gigantic zit on his face? 
Homie has the biggest <laughs> zit I've ever seen oh, on a pug. Look. Look Dude, that thing is Mount Everest. I'm Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> Sue wants to pop it, but I think we're just gonna leave it alone. Homie, you have got the biggest zit I've ever seen, dude. Oh, it's okay, buddy. High five if you got a big zit. Your pup, your pup. Oh, good boy.